Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek, the internet's most passionate software engineering show. I am your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and today we're going to be talking about Groovy Strings, aka G Strings. So sit back, download a cup of knowledge, because SE Geek begins now. Okay, today we're going to be talking about uh, groovy strings, also amusingly uh, called G strings. So, uh, just to you know, start off, I'm just gonna make a variable here. We'll call it string one, and we'll you know do just the traditional Java way, and we'll print that out. Um, actually, we'll do s one dot class dot name, and we'll print s one. Oops, s one. Run that, and as you can see, it's a Java dot lang dot string, and it is you now printing out something. So what you can also do, especially if you want to say, well, I'll keep these here, and I'll. If you want to have quotes within quotes, you can use single quotes, and I can run that again, and you can see I get the single quotes here without having to escape the single quotes, which can be very useful if you're doing something that has like an English sentence with quotes, because it's always annoying in Java to have to you know escape everything. Um, but this is still just a Java dot lang dot string. Now. If you move up a little bit, now with the uh, double quotes, as you saw before, they can be a java.lang.string. Compiler's smart enough to know that. But what you could also do is we're going to go here and define S2. Something else. And we'll just... Uh, single quote that so that's just a string for right now what we can do is actually add in a variable reference using the dollar sign operator and put in s2 here now what this will do when I run it is you'll see that it is now a g string implementation and you know you'll see that the variable comes out like this now uh, one thing to keep in mind is this reference has to be defined before uh, it is actually used. One way to get around that is to you know wrap this statement with uh, something like a, a method or a closure, which I might be talking about in uh, I believe the next episode. Um, but this has to be traditionally you know done before this is actually executed. Otherwise, you know you'll get a null pointer exception or something like that. Um, or an undefined. I don't remember in Groovy. It might be just property undefined, depending on your scope. Anyways, moving on. So this gives you, you know, the ability to insert variables. Now another thing that you can do is you can wrap this with curly braces, because uh, say you wanted to add a period after this. If you did it without the curly braces, it's going to interpret this as a, you know, property access. So what we you know you want to add, if you're going to do something you know that needs a dot usually you have to add curly braces but something else you can do is you can do dot say length and run actual arbitrary code from within this string so now if i run this i get 14 out here which is actually the length of this particular string so that's you know very useful uh, allows you to do some templating and whatnot, but I think we can do even better. So uh, one of the things that that uh, Python has that's very nice is something called triple quoted strings. So right now, if I run this, um, like the it very very much like uh, oh uh, Python, you you see that you know you can run triple quoted strings. It looks just the same. Now if I do something like this and go line two, actually that's line three, but no, whatever. Now I have actually a multi-line string. 
And if I run that, you'll see it'll actually print it out multi-line. And I don't have to escape anything within these multi-lines, including quotes, you know, double quotes, anything like that. I can just stick it in here. And if I run that, see, it just prints it out. No big deal. You know, no problems. The only thing that you would have to escape, though, is, you know, the dollar, obviously the dollar sign symbol because that has special meaning for templating. But this allows you to do, you know, a lot of, like, just special formatting of strings and, you know, putting it out in the format that you want uh, with, you know, with templating. And you don't have to escape every little detail like you do in Java where you have to, you know, escaping things just becomes kind of a nightmare. So... Moving on, uh, one last thing I want to show you with uh, strings is I'm just going to start over here and do def. Uh, let's see. Say I have a list of strings, and we'll just create a list here. We'll do one, and we'll do two. three. So now we have a list of strings. You know, this could be like multiple variables or whatnot. Just for the sake of, you know, this argument, uh, well, actually, no, it can be, well, you could put them in, in a list. But we have a list of strings. And what we really want to do is concatenate all of these into just one string and print it out. So let's uh, get rid of this. And we'll just do list, and we're going to use the dot join, which is a very uh, nice uh, method to have for a list. So this will allow you to just join all those strings together and say we want to have them comma separated. Now, to do this in Java, you have to set up if then statements because you know you can always get like the comma between here and here. But there's always that edge case, which is a pain. So you have to do you know, something to check to say, oh, am I at the end? In Groovy, you don't have to do that. You just run this. And see, you get one, two, three, and no comma at the end. In one line. It's amazing. Plus, you know, if you wanted to, you could just have this be a space instead. And you know, it'll delimit it like that. Um, I think if you put no delimiter it'll just uh yeah it just crashes them all together but you know this is something that's very powerful you know with uh strings that are in a list now say you had like three variables and you wanted to concatenate all of them you could just uh do something like this so you could do var 1 var 2 var 3 actually I'm doing this wrong, <laughs> but you know you could do something like this, and this would concatenate you know variable one, two, and three, uh, you know separating it by space if we had variable one, two, and three already set up here. So that's pretty much all I had to say about uh, strings in Groovy. But uh, Groovy gives you a lot of uh, you know extra things that just make it you know easier to work with than say Java so play with it and I'll talk to you next time